Off-grid living is becoming more and more popular as both a way to combat the rising cost of housing and to clock out of this increasingly connected world, even if it's just for a little bit. But sometimes you need technology to get away from technology. So when Jackery reached out to sponsor this video featuring their Explorer line of power stations, my writer Colin immediately thought of his friend Morgan. He's a photographer who's been living that van life in a ski resort parking lot for about a year now with some serious tech deficiencies. So we're gonna drop a tech bomb on his van and bring his mobile editing rig slash living accommodations into the 21st century. And we're gonna learn a little something about van living while we're at it. First things first, this is the star of the show, the Jackery Explorer 1500. This little machine is absolutely stuffed with genuine Panasonic 18650 cells, just like these ones, 130 of them to be precise. That means there is a veritable buttload of power crammed into this package, slightly under 1500 watt hours. And these 110 volt AC outlets are Honestly, they're just insane. We took the little brother of this, the Explorer 1000, and hooked up an RTX gaming rig, an HDR monitor, and filming ah! lights all at once. As for the Explorer 1500, it'll do 1800 watts of sustained load and up to 3600 watts of peak load. So toast, no problem. Blended avocado for your toast? Kinda awful sounding, I prefer sliced, but theoretically possible. Then, over on the DC power side of things, we get one of my favorite features, USB-C power delivery, up to 60 watts worth, along with two USB type A's for good measure. Now let's talk about what we're gonna hook up to it. Initially, we considered building a PC to replace the current setup in here, but seeing as Morgan's living that mobile life, oh, and he's a Mac user, we opted for a shiny new M1 MacBook Air. Sorry, PC guys. The truth is, Apple Silicon really does offer class-leading power efficiency, and with the thermal pad mod, which we have pre-applied, of course, the Air manages just about identical performance to the M1 MacBook Pro. We did kind of blow the budget on this, but Morgan's a cool guy, right? Okay then. For a monitor, we went with an LG 27GL850. I actually named this the best monitor of 2019. It's absolutely overkill. I mean, it sports a one millisecond response time for that extreme gaming. But it's an engineering sample that we were able to spare and for a 144 Hertz display, it is remarkably color accurate. Colin calibrated this one for Morgan and we got the Delta E's down to just 2.85. That is going to be worlds ahead of this old MacBook and should handle photo and video editing comfortably. But where's all that video to go? Ah, that's where Lassie's Rugged Rage Shuttle comes in. This is a big step in the right direction for Morgan. It's like baby's first data redundancy. Inside, there are two four terabyte drives along with a RAID controller. That means you can either run it in RAID zero for a relatively speedy eight terabytes of storage, or you can go big galaxy brain and use RAID one, giving you four terabytes of fully redundant storage. That means that one of the drives inside could outright fail without losing any data. And this is something most folks might not consider, but in a mobile, read, vibration heavy environment, hard drives are just plain not going to last as long, even with a rubber bumper. Friends do not let friends lose data. And all of this is going to be connected to this Soho dock from CalDigit. It lets us run a single USB Type-C cable out to the MacBook for charging, data, and video, and then from there, we can run DisplayPort up to our monitor and connect to the hard drive over USB-C. And everything will, of course, be powered by the Explorer 1500. And we threw in an Amazon Bluetooth soundbar for good measure. But while the outputs are awesome, the inputs are where things get even more interesting. With a Jackery Explorer, sure, you can charge from the wall with this chonky 300 watt wall charger, but the last time I checked, running an extension cord out of the ski lodge across the parking lot is mostly frowned upon, mostly. So for true off-grid power, the Explorer 1500 can handle up to 600 watts of solar input with solar panels ugh, like these bad boys. These turn an Explorer into what Jackery likes to call a solar generator. 
So each one of these panels will output 100 watts at peak. That gives us, with four of them, a total of 400 watts, meaning that in theory, we could fully charge our Explorer 1500 in under four hours. Now, in practice, especially here in BC, you are unlikely to get the peak output from these. But even so, we're looking at comfortably being able to charge up by day and work or watch Netflix all night. And of course, it can also be hooked into 12 volt power and juiced up off the car's alternator. That is a bonkers amount of flexibility. So this is it, hey? Yeah, this is it. I mean, I definitely enjoy that house life with, you know, three kids and all. So I don't know if I'd want to cram all them in oh, there. Oh, no, but go for it. Sell me on the digital nomad life. All right, well, here it is. It's a lot bigger than it looks. That's not, a, <laughs> I don't, uh, I keep trapping myself and that's what she said things. It's way bigger than I expected. <laughs> I mean, when you paint everything white inside, yeah. it looks bigger. It's like the TARDIS, but the TARDIS was not white inside. So show, show me around, show yeah. me what I need. All right. Okay. Well, all you need is a... Okay, why is this seat backwards? Oh, it's on a swivel. No. Yeah, yeah, it's loud, oh. but it's on a swivel. That's sick. Yeah. You could sit there and like, yeah. just be like hanging? Yeah. You could discuss business or problems of the world or anything you'd like. Okay, now I recognize this. What have I oh, done? Oh, oh God, no. there's all the, sorry, all the different sorry. modes. You guys oh, weren't no. supposed to, uh. Yeah, I'm a short guy, but like, I am easily comfortable yeah. walking around in here. You're almost, yeah. yeah. So then uh, there's like vents. Yeah, here. so What's under that? underneath you yeah. is a diesel heater. Oh, and seriously. it just pumps out heat like you would not believe when it's on. And what about this one? Uh, and that is just going a uh, vent into my battery compartment. Sink? I mean, what do you hook up to? Uh, there's a water tank under here. And then I got my food, more storage for some camera bits. And then that's all my ski stuff and camping gear at the back. Show me the workflow then. So what, what's your editing setup? Right now? Like? Where are you gonna sit? Right now, my, ed up, my setup is this. No, no, I don't wanna see that. Get that out of here. <laughs> Horrible. Are you a standing worker? Like you're a standing desk guy? Yeah, well, like pretty active dude. Yeah. So I figured we'd go with the stand up desk for now. And yeah, this would be it. This thing can go against the wall here, but we put it on that swivel so I could sit here or I could just lean up against the wall there. Right. By bringing this out like that, if I wanted to get a little comfortable. Or you could lie in bed. Or I could lie in bed and watch a movie if we faced it that way, right? Okay, the skylights. You put those in, right? Uh, the skylights were in the van already, in the they roof. Were, really? Yeah. The only thing I did not build in this van were these frames, which my dad built. Wow, so that ended up taking up a lot less space than... Uh... Oh, is that the old one? That's that's the original oh, one. Oh, well, yeah. the capacity of that would have been dog shit. All right. That, that is good enough only to run the house electronics. That's a glorified car battery, pretty much. I still don't think I would want to have three kids in here. They could fit in. Oh, okay, yes. They could. You could <laughs> they stuff them. Got all the extra blankets just in case yeah, the diesel here. Just all my clothes and, or whatever. and Like, whatnot. do you worry about that? Like emergency supplies in case. Well, you know. I do have like, I have a camping box down here with like a minus 10 sleeping bag and all that sort of stuff. So if I right. was in like a bad situation. By the way, can I just say my favorite mod in this entire thing? This right here. Yeah. Cause like, what is up with that, right? That's like, that's the Linus Tech Tips way. I like it. This is freaking awesome, man. It's all you need. So the last thing you're gonna need to be truly on grid, off the grid, is like a Starlink connection or something. Yes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this epic van life tech makeover. Thanks again to Jackery for sponsoring this video. Thanks again to our neighbors for backing up into their unit. Thanks again to Morgan for, you know, providing us with his van to use as a set for the day. If you guys want to check out one of Jackery's power stations, we're going to have the link down below. And if you haven't got enough of this kind of outdoor tech, then maybe check out our uh, <coughs> ultimate camping battle station video. It was a bit of a weird one, but it was super cool, and I would actually kind of love to revisit it with one of these instead of that uh, diesel or gas generator or whatever it was. Getting that thing up to the campsite was a nightmare. <laughs>